Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the podcast. I'm joined here today by Mr. John May. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me, Richard. You're very, you're very <laughs> welcome, John. Very, very welcome. Um, I've been watching you for a couple of years on YouTube. Um, really, really enjoy your skits. Really, nice really one, enjoy it. And I was watching it again today. And um, when I when I watched it back today, and I was I was looking for a little bit more insight. Um, I can see that obviously it's funny, but you can act. Nice one. <laughs> you can actually act. Not, not everybody can. Um, some of the actors we see on screen some, sometimes can't do it. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit uh, where you're from originally and how you got into acting. Acting. Yeah. Well, um, I'm from County Rose in Walton, mm -hmm. in sunny Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And I've been a bar I was well, I've been a barber for years. Um, well, I started barbering when I was about 20. Yeah. 2021. 20, and they're like, I was doing it for four or five years and um, I decided to open my own shop. Mm -hmm. So I opened my own shop, Sweeps, which I was so passionate about. I loved it, you know. It was my life. It was me all. I was really hyper-focused on that. And then um, I was doing really well. But there was this customer that used to come in. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny because he doesn't speak to me anymore. It's hilarious. I always talk about him on podcasts. He, um, he was like encouraging me. John, does does this acting class? Yeah, mm -hmm. Let's do acting. I was like... I was too focused on my business, I, yeah. you know what I mean? It's always something I thought I could do, yeah. but I thought I'll pursue it when I'm older. Yeah. And then um, anyway, we was going on and going on. Eventually he went, I've signed you up for an audition for this school in Manchester, yeah. Manchester School of Acting. Yeah. And I was like... Why was he pushing you to act? Because he wanted to go and he wanted someone to go with. Oh, uh, okay. And I think he probably recognised it. John might be good at it, you know? Yeah. Um, were you doing like impressions and stuff when you were, when you were in the barbershop or...? I've always... I've always used humour, I think, to, to navigate my way through life. Do you right. know what I mean? Okay. I've, I think that's, that's what... No, that's noted on the psychology sheet. Yeah, right, that, right. You definitely <laughs> use humour. I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not the biggest guy in the world. So I had to... Uh, Peacekeeper, mediator, I see. There we go. I, <laughs> I used, I used humour to, uh, to get by, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and I probably to like... I, I'm going to go, look, I'm speaking to you, Richard, so I can do this. Yeah. But I think like you, people look at the likes of Robert Williams and stuff like that. And I think sometimes people are in pain or they, they use, you learn to be funny. Mm. You learn what gets a response out of people. Mm. And I think people use it as a mask because yeah. I, I can do accents. So I know when I was a kid, mm. if I was in a situation where I might've felt a little bit, um, overwhelmed or I might have felt a little bit intimidated or mm. I would do accents or I would do humour mm. to get through that Okay. so you know I'd like to think I've worked through all my shit now yeah. but I'm left with them um, skills yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean yeah. Yeah. so anyway this customer um, I, I went I was like bloody hell can I swear yeah, of course. I was like, fucking hell. And, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, John. <laughs> so, yeah. so I went, I, I ended up going to this school and um, for an audition, I had to learn lines and everything. It was like... Yeah, it's hard. I, well, yeah, I mean, also, I'm from County Road mm -hmm. and I think people like you me... You say that like it's an affliction or something. Well, it is. I've, well, got, it, I've got County well, Road. It's not an affliction, but it's... A, it's a, people have working class, man, working class mentalities. Yeah, yeah. They don't think... People like us can do that. Yeah. So you think, oh, and I even got it because I'm when I started, I remember this fella coming into me. I was cutting his hair and I'm cutting his hair and he was like, actor, John. And I'm, what do you, what do you mean? He went, you want to be an actor? And I was like, what, what, yeah. are you, what are you allowed to be? Like builder, grafter, boxer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not into builder. You don't make me feel uncomfortable about myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I went, I went, yeah. I said, what do you mean? He went, come on, John. You're not exactly fucking Brad Pitt, are you? It's like you cheeky cheeky but I and could you had just... the scissors in your hand. No, I never. <laughs> I paid off though, this little thing. <laughs> and he, uh... But I could have listened to him. Yeah. I could have thought, you know what? Yeah. yeah, I'm a bit too big for my boots here. I'm maybe stepping out of comfort zones here. Mm. Maybe he's right. Mm. But anyway, a year and a half later, I've been in Corrie or something. Mm. And um, he's, i seen him in a pub. Mm. And he seen me. It was on Christmas Day and he seen me. And I seen him. It was like, and he marched over to me. Yeah. And he put his hands out and went, I was wrong. Well oh, done. Fair play. Is right, lads. Good man. Good man. But anyway, and I'm going all over the cafe, aren't I? No, you're good. You're good. But, um, How was that coffee you had before you came? I had a coffee before I come <laughs> and I'm off my tits. 
<laughs> Let me tell you a story. Phone him, lad. <laughs> lad, phone for two coffees there, lad. Yeah. <laughs> the two co- get like three for a five. 2, 2 a.m. in somebody's back kitchen. <laughs> Listen, I've got some stories for you here. Listen to me now. I am off your tits off coffee. <laughs> coffee Nero is the worst as well. Yeah, it's like Colombian, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> 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 anyway, so I went to this or I went to this audition to get in a school and um I learned the lines and stuff and like I went into the audition and I was like I was apologizing, I was going like, I've never done this before and all that. Yeah. And uh, but I got in and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. It's it was like so I've got my own little acting class as well, uh, just act. Just act dot co dot UK. And um I didn't know that. I didn't know you yeah, taught yeah, yeah. drama we, as yeah, well. Yeah, we've got our classes tonight. Um, done it for a few years now, I love it. Mm. Um, what was I going to say? So what I, what I found with acting was, um, people think acting is a chance to be someone else and put that mask on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's a chance yeah. to have a break from their reality. Yeah. But really, Richard, it's an opportunity to be yourself. It's an opportunity to let the guard down. It's an mm. opportunity to... It's a breath of fresh air for some people, and people become addicted to coming to classes. They think because yeah. they get the buzz out of the acting, it's not. It's because they've got a chance to let the let it all just drop and just yeah. show their emotion and just be vulnerable and da 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 da. Nice. So yeah, so that's what acting does for me. I heard um, James Gandolfini describe it like that. You know Tony Soprano. Yeah, he was talking about is that because you wouldn't. He had the same thing, working class background. Nobody really. I think he started as a stuntman first, but no. Like his environment was like, come on, you've not look at look at the size of you. You look like a big fucking bear. There's no fuck, and he was amazing. I mean, The Sopranos, one of the best TV yeah, shows yeah. of our uh, generation, isn't it? But he said a similar thing that it wasn't about taking on a role and, and putting on a mask. It was about being you and bringing yeah. that part of yourself forward. Yeah, it's a very interesting way of looking at it. So our, our sec, well, third acting class, everyone mm. comes in and goes, "I can do accents and all that." Yeah, mm. I can, I can act and all that. My mum says I can act. <laughs> So <laughs> what I do on the third class, I sit down and I I I tell them about the worst time of my life. Mm. So what I do, I, I become really vulnerable. So I show mm. my ass mm. and then I, I I ask them then come up and show the mm. the saddest time of your life or the worst mm. time of your life. And everyone mm. comes out with incredible stories, mm. but everyone's shown their ass. Mm. So everyone's shown their vulnerabilities. And what that mm. does then, that brings all the class together mm. and it gives everyone, everyone, everyone feels safe then. Mm. And then you can really... Let themselves go in the classes. Do you know sounds, what I mean? Sounds very therapeutic, like group, like group therapy yeah. almost. I'm gonna ask them to. <laughs> I was starting to run the class with. He said, "What home sh- homework should we give them next week?" And I went, "Why don't we get them to write a letter to the seven year old version of them?" And he's like, "No, we can't do that." Yeah. He's like, "It's a bit too heavy." But yeah. I, I do think it, 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 it can be quite therapeutic for people. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I know that. Uh, not so much here, but over in America, like for decades now, they've they've had a lot of reported success with using drama as a way of doing therapeutic sessions with people. It's t- what it's helped me to do, it's helped me to be, because I used to suffer from anxiety really bad, like mm. in my 20s, 30s. I just put so much pressure on myself and I lived up to people's expectations of me because my barbers was doing really well. Mm. But I'd done it because I loved it. Mm. But then it started really well and I put pressure on myself and I had a lot of anxiety, but what anxiety is to me it's the fear of facing a fear mm. and that was probably failure at the time mm. and what i learned was if you're transparent and honest and be yourself you've got nothing to fear you've got nothing to hide you know what i mean yeah and that's what acting does as well yeah it, it's taught me to be transparent it's taught me to not be scared to be me because i'm the best version of me yeah and i'm a product yeah. So I don't want to be a second-rate Danny DeVito or a second-rate Bob Hoskins or, mm. you know, a really shit Tom Hardy. Do mm. you know what I mean? I'm the best John May. So that's, just be yourself. That's, yeah. that's it. So you started out, you had the barbershop, then they suggested acting classes to you. That was when you were about 20. No, no, I was about 25. Then. Oh, you were 25 then. Yeah. And then how did it sort of progress from the, from there for you? So when I was at the school in Manchester, I I was getting into it and... um. I said to them, hey, do you, reckon, like, do, you reckon, do you reckon I'm good enough to get an agent and that? Mm. And they were like, well, yeah, why not? So my kid's mum, Denise, her second cousin in London, who we knew was an agent. Mm. And um, I thought, I'm going to apply to her. I'm mm. going to ask her. Um, well, I, I phoned her when I first got into acting and went, I'm starting acting, you know. Mm. And she said she was like, oh, fuck's sake. 
<laughs> he's going to ask me to be his fucking agent and I'm going to have to say no. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Blah, yeah. blah, blah. But she phoned, she contacted this girl and he went, what's your mail like? And he went, do you know what? I'll take a little chance on him, you know? Yeah. And then um, she took me on. She told me that story later. She's like, mm. I was never going to take you on. Mm. Um, I would have got another agent, but I was fortunate to get with Elaine and I've been with her for 15 years now. Um, and then I started going to auditions mm. and... I went off for loads, Richards. I went off for, what to go off for? I went... Well, actually, one of the first jobs, one of the first auditions I went off for was for a film called Will. Mm. And it was with a casting director called Dan Hubbard. Um, and Bob Hoskins was in it. Damien Lewis. It was a big £30 million pound film shooting in wow. Istanbul. Fucking hell. <laughs> and I got the fucking job. Yeah. So I flew to Istanbul um, and I didn't have a fucking clue. Yeah. I absolutely winged it. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And but how, did, how did it go? It went brilliant. They, yeah. they, they wanted to be expanded my part and stuff like that. That's they great. loved me that much. Yeah, yeah, it was great. But then I was going for commercials. I was lucky with that one. But then I kept going for commercials and going and going for commercials. Mm. And um, I think what I was doing, I was second guessing what I thought they wanted. Mm. So I went off for about 30. And Dan, the casting director, he just, we're just, we're really close friends now. And um, he said to me, for every commercial, each part, about 700 people are put forward. Mm. So to finish in the last one's quite hard. But then um, it all clicked me one day. It was like, just go in and be yourself, man. Mm. Just go in. And if anything, like when you're an actor as well, like people said to me at the start, oh, you need to drop the accent, John. You need to drop, you know, maybe calm the scouts down a little mm. bit. It's like, no, that's my fucking strength. Mm. That's my strength. So... If anything, I do rev the scouts up a little bit, but I just go in and be myself. Yeah. But me point telling you about the one in 700s, when I realised that, I got four commercials in a row. Did you, yeah? Yeah. So I finished like first out of 700 people in a row because I realised what you need to do is which, be your fucking self. And since then, I've done 32 commercials, which is a lot. So before that, you were going, oh, here's a commercial for coffee and I think they're looking for this and I'm so I'm going to do something. And then you stopped. You just were like, I'm not going to put oh, I just act. went in and just talked about the dog yeah. or the kids or... Yeah. Yeah, and I sold me rather than a version of them. I thought they wanted, you know, or tried yes. to be a bit, you know, be like them. Yeah, yeah, You know, these which, London, you know... Which is not what they want. No, they want, no, no. These London people that you're talking about, are they yeah. humans? I'm not sure if they're fully complete. These London humans. people, you get media people, don't you? Media folk. Which media is, folk. They're a weird... They're a weird... Yeah, they all species. dress like different from the 90s. Yeah, weird species. There's probably some human. producer watching this who really likes me. It's like, fuck him off now. Right, fuck him off now, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've only had a few interactions because I've done, uh, like, documentaries and, and uh, the little bits and pieces in films and that. And it gave me, a, over time, a real aversion to that. There's a specific type of human that seems to end up in media from London. Yeah. And they freak me the fuck out. So you don't want to talk about I you? just can't stand <laughs> Sorry, some of you I'm sure are lovely. Yeah, some of them are great. Yeah, except the people who work for advice, I've not forgotten. Um, so so who who really taught you how to do acting? Well, we, we, can, we can all act. I'm acting now because I'm off my tits and off coffee. Your little and feet I'm, are dancing away. I know, I am, I am really off my fucking tits. <laughs> who taught me to act? Um... Well, I suppose it was Mark Hudson in Manchester School of Acting. Yeah. He sort of, he, he really taught me, taught me the basics, like. Yeah. And then I think some people just have a natural flair for it. Yeah. And then some people might come into my class and they're trying to act. Yeah. You know, do you think they might fuel a, like there was a lad the other day, Jeff, if you're watching, Jeff was doing a scene where he was eating a sandwich and after he ate the sandwich, he went like that with his mouth. It's like, we well, don't fucking do that in real life, Jeff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's... It, uh, people can hone in. It takes a little while for people to to get the flair, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I think I just did. I did have a flair for it. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, I was going to ask you, like, obviously you're from, you've lived Liverpool your whole life. Yeah. Well, I moved to Frodgham for four years. Like, Jesus. I know. We'll, we'll, get, our, to, we'll get to that. Bit. We all have our cross the birds on. <laughs> um, Frodgham, fuck. Um, <laughs> so I, I always ask uh, people. Well. Everybody that I've interviewed so far for this podcast has been from Liverpool. I've travelled quite a bit and I think Liverpool is an interesting city. It's a distinct city. Yeah. And the culture here is distinct. 
Would you agree with that? Would you say it's an, like scousers are a, perhaps a rare breed? Most certainly, yeah. Yeah, it, we're only we're our own thing. It's the it's its own thing. The other thing that I have um, everywhere I go, if you say Liverpool, they go, "Oh, it's, yeah, Liverpool, big city in it." It's like, no, it's a million people. It's fucking tiny. Mm. It's just we're really noisy. <laughs> we're really loud, That's and it, you get the impression. What do you think has caused that? What do you think creates that culture here in Liverpool? Mm. Well, first of all. I think like well the Beatles first, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But you're talking about the culture, aren't you? I think I think Liverpool they got plays a bit of a bad hand at times, haven't they? So I think the people have had to stick together, like with the eighties with Maggie Thatcher mm. saying let them rot and it wasn't until Michael Heseltine come in and fucking shoved her out and he's been even though he's a Tory, he's, he's been great for Liverpool. Mm. And um but I think it's that been Liverpool have been unfortunate with things and obviously with Hillsborough as well. And mm. you know, they tried to brush that off like it was our fault and mm. just just a few other things as well. I think Liverpool people have had to really stick together yeah. and they've gone against the system and they've gone against the government. It's like use fuck us over, so fuck you. Yeah. So that's it. And like booing the national anthem last week, and the, a lot of people hate the royal family and da 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 da. It's just, I just think we're all in it together. So how are you? How are you perceived outside of the Northwest when you when you go down to London and you do your auditions? As a character. As a oh, there's the scouser. Right. Yeah, I'd say. Do you ever feel like it's patronizing at all? I think people are respectful. Yeah. But yeah, you 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 could be seen as a novelty. Right. Because you're a cheeky, cheeky, chappy scouser, aren't cheeky, you? Then? Cheeky little stereotypical scouser. Yes, always I think that's joke. what they say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah. But, Good question, though. But, but that, but well, I, I, because I've discussed this at length with people and then I'm like, but then, so so some people will get annoyed by that. They're like stereotyping and it's, it's patronising. And I'm like, but if we are like that, the stereotypes, go, like if you're in a mixed group of people, and the one who's making all the jokes and making all the noise is a scouser. That's why people th- have that impression. Yeah, scouser. of course, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 kind of us as well, isn't it, a little bit? Maybe that's what me, me, I said to you before about I've used humour to, yeah. to get through. and to Maybe that as scousers, maybe that's what we've done as a whole. Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of like, I think there's a lot of pressure here in the city collectively what I'm hearing you say, it mirrors my own experiences in childhood was a lot of pressure. So you you kind of, you wouldn't have developed these skills if it was an easy life, mm. is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're under pressure and that's where diamonds are formed, aren't they? Yeah, you're yeah, under yeah. huge amounts of pressure. And that pressure is, is suffering, it's pain. Like, and that's what that's what produces the the skill. So I do, <laughs> want, I do wonder if there's an element of that. Were you... Um, in your, if you don't mind me asking, in in your in your family life, did you find yourself as a kid playing the role of peacekeeper and mediator? No, I was the um, I was the youngest of five. So you're the and and to Adler, the psychologist Adler, you'd be the Joker. The youngest is the is the Joker. Is that right? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. Well, that explains the dynamic with my kids. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Uh, Why is your youngest the, the, the yeah? I'd say so. Yeah, she's the coolest cat in yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. And they or they say like the the youngest gets does the most permission, the most permissiveness. The older ones they're always going to say, "Look after your younger. You look after the." But the youngest one is the baby of everyone, so there's much more permission. To oh, but I've got a twin sister. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is she funny? No. Okay, she can be, it's all right, but... She's watching that. No, she probably isn't. <laughs> if you are, are you? <laughs> oh, I'll add you on another podcast. Yeah. She tells the same story every time. <laughs> so you didn't, you weren't really a, a mediator, but you were, you were able to, to be funny and to, in, in, your, in your family life back home. I think I had to. I, think, I mean, mum had three boys, mm. then I had... Found out she was pregnant, mm. probably hoping for a girl. Mm. Then a week before or two weeks before she was having a baby, she found out having twins. So the girl, the girl come out, mm. and then me. So I think I had to be funny to be heard. Right. Uh, I mean? So yeah, because you're competing with a lot of a lot of other kids. For yeah, you're competing attention. for the love and affection, aren't you? Yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> I must stop smoking crack. It's just not good for you. I just can't give it up. No, very Moorish. Um, <laughs> the the uh, on on the the, the Liverpool thing. Um, can you say the word R O A D for me? Road. Okay, road. 
How do world people say the road? <laughs> Over the road. The fuck is <laughs> I didn't know. Tomorrow. Say it again. Tomorrow. Why didn't you know about the O's? No. Didn't you until I brought it? Until I saw it on YouTube and I went, oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I can't. So I, I've wanted to ask you this for fucking ages. Like Corona at, Road. At, Corona Road. I don't believe it was that. We went past Corona Road <laughs> after all. I was like, stop the car. Stop the fucking car. We've got to have this. Because there's like a blind spot. I'm pretty good with accents. And I, I was like in school, I was, I was into language. But because I'm from the world. I can't hear it. So when Scousers say, oh, you fucking wool, I'm like, you're just pretending we have a different accent until I heard you do it. And really? I was like, and I was right. like, oh shit, it's real. Fuck, it's real. So Wirral is re- road. Road. Well, I'm going a bit deeper there. Yeah, yeah. D- but you have to find something, don't you? The original joke with Craig, the character was like, Kenny Corona went missing and I wanted to introduce another character. And I thought, I'll give it a, because I knew about the O. I like Polo, you know, Fear Punto tomorrow. Coke. Got any numbers for Coke? <laughs> and it, you're a joke, mate. What are you laughing at? What are you fucking laughing at over there? So what I was doing with Craig, he didn't sound as as woolish as he does now, but he wanted him to sound like a scouser and like, but he dropped the out. Right. So it's like when you when you're speaking to someone and you go, they're speaking, they're, oh he's from Liverpool. Yeah. Oh he's not. Do he's you know not, what I mean? It's no. just the out. Road. It's the giveaway. Because the only the only time I've never heard road before was when uh, I used to taxi a new ferry and the guy who would it was still radios it was a long time ago when he gave us jobs because I I'd worked in Liverpool I was doing door work in Liverpool and then taxiing by day and occasionally when he gave me an address I'd be like I'm sure he's saying that a little bit because everybody else is saying road and then he goes road and I was like what's he doing road road <laughs> It's going to be bewildering for people who are not from here. This, but I need, I need this moment. It's the I big, need this. it's the big giveaway, isn't it? The O. The so the O is the giveaway. So, the o, so say yeah. O. So you sound like all the lads in the gym, really, like Brombro, like over there. No, I'm going a bit more towards Chester now. Yeah, uh, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm made up with that. Uh, how did you say tomorrow? Tomorrow. So it's the second O. Tom, yeah. Tomorrow. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's tomorrow. tomorrow. It's just the O. It's, it's the O. Draw it's... like Snickers duo. <laughs> <laughs> what what else is up? there? Polos. Polos. Solero. <laughs> <laughs> Cornetto. I, I, I couldn't. Because the last girl I was dating, she was from Crosby, and she used to take the piss out of me. And I was like, I'm... they've got to, you know, go towards for me. They dropped the O. Do they, yeah? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like so, Sefton, I've got the O as well. Because she'd, she'd do my accent back to me and it just sounded like a gay Scouse accent. And I'm like, I don't think that what you're doing is... <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from Bevington. Oh, Bevington, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a Bromborough, basically. Same same accent as Bromborough. Isn't Bromborough lovely? Well, what's that little place in Bromborough? Wait, no, it's not... Is it Bromborough? Raby Mere. Them little houses, the little... Yeah. It's lovely, yeah. aren't it? Yeah, some of it The widow's broad. lovely, by the way. Yeah. We just have a fucking weird wool, <laughs> woolly back accent over there. Why do you scousers so? skit the whittle? You drive through the whittle and it's gorgeous. Mm. So why 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 does why do scousers need to like show a hatred for the whittle? Because we're weird as fuck. I think I think people from the world are weird. Try driving down County Road, Richard. Okay. It's not that scousers aren't weird. I can say that I'm from County Road. Yeah, can, okay, there is <laughs> there is weird because I did security here for years, I did site security. Uh, like speak Kirk Dole around that. Yes, it, it is weird here. But see, obviously I love people from the world, but it is a different culture. I I Now this is where I agree with Scousers because world people say, no, it's the same. And no, go, it's, it's the same. No, no, <laughs> lad. No, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> it's the same. And I'm like, it, it isn't. It's not the same. It is to everybody else. To people from yeah, Birmingham, yeah, yeah. Manchester, it's the fucking same. But to us, we know. We know there's a difference. You can tell a difference, like, I don't know, people in, well, so South Enders and North Enders. Yeah. Like, a South End's more like that, do you know what I mean? They, like, got, like, like a, yeah. Yeah. in their voice, like. Yeah. And then, you like, North End's different. It's a, would you agree that was a South End, yeah? Like, do you know Where what I mean? Yeah. Where am I from? North You're from Norris Green. <laughs> Norris Green, lad. <laughs> No, but it all round the pool's different. No, it is different. Tell. And I mean, I've I've said that to people from 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 my side of the water, and they go, "No, it's the same accent." I'm like, "Speak is not the same as Norris Green. Is not the same as Toxteth. It's these are all they're, they're different 
you definitely there's different dialects there. I can see it. I can, yeah. Yeah, bewildering for people who are not from here. But when I heard you do that, that's when it clicked for me. Yeah, there is actually a different, uh, a completely different action here. And I, as I say, I do, I do think the culture is, uh, is a different thing. I wanted to ask you, um, aside from the acting, because you've got your YouTube channel. Uh, well, to John May YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm more of a. It's more Instagram. You're more on Instagram. Yeah, more active. I don't. I get more of a response on Instagram than I do YouTube. Like, YouTube is tough now. You are. YouTube is really yeah, tough. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's very very hard now. See, I'm not in it for. I've, my goal, Richard, is. I don't really like being a social media person. I don't like that pressure of having to come up with something funny just to keep going. But it's like, I like to, I, I want my own, I want to write my own show. I want to have my own show. That's what I wanted to ask you because when I look at the YouTube stuff that I've seen, you're definitely way beyond Vine or TikTok in yeah. terms of the depth of the content there. And um, obviously it's, it's all written by you. Yeah, me and a friend, Owen, yeah. Okay. I come up with the ideas and he structured the story better. So then, so you do have aspirations then to write and direct? Yeah, I'm something. writing a pilot now. Yeah, I'm writing. Oh, a, yeah. yeah, I'm well speaking to, been speaking to a production company, a pretty big one, and um, I said to him, "Can I write a pilot?" And they were like, "Yeah." Mm. So we're writing that, and we're going to present it to them. Is that a, a, for a comedy show? Yeah, it's basically taking all the characters. Okay, taking all the characters and creating something. I'm, yeah, and putting it them would, into a show. Yeah, yeah. But it's going, it's going all right. It's funny. It's good. Good. Very good. Yeah. No, because when I when I when I watched it back again today, um, Kenny's Christmas Carol. Yeah. Did you watch that? I did. I watched it again today because I was looking for the one that that actually disturbed me, and it was <laughs> it was number two, the second the second yeah, one. Yeah, the P Price one. Fucking hell! Uh, it disturbed I, you. Yeah, it made me cry. Did it? Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, I remember this one. It, it made me tear up last yeah. time. So I watched it again today and you know started what? tearing up when again. The when the lad edited it and he sent me it, I was in the car and fraud him. I did cry. Yeah. It just went whoop, took yeah. me back. It's really tough. It's really tough to watch. And uh, that's why when I came into the interview, I was like, okay, there's something I want to say here, which is you can act. And and not really genuinely, not not everyone can act. Nice not, every, not everybody can do it. Um, but when you become... If people can watch it on YouTube, obviously look it up. When you become the abusive father, that is the abusive father. And like the rage dumping onto a child is is fucking hard to watch. Mm. Really hard to watch. I think like like when we were filming, we filmed that in the Only Fools and Horses bar in Liverpool. Mm. And uh, a lad come up to me, Mark, and it, like, because he's one of it, well, I won't say too much, but he would come up to me and went, John, that, that, was, that was my childhood, lad. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think a lot of people... Yes. But you, but yeah, yeah. No, but it did, like that, me, that little boy sitting, playing that N64, that was me. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And when you, when you uh, played the abusive father, were you doing that to the actor there or were you just doing it to empty space? Was, did, was he sat there looking at you? Oh, no, I was doing it to the kids, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, lad, you're going to have to learn what acting's about. Oh, sit there, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder no one likes you. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh yeah, Ray Ray Winstone levels of uh, uh because I'd only I've only actually I don't know if you've seen the film Nil by Mouth. No. It's, I know I know it. But you know it it's it's hot it's hard. But it's like that to watch. Oh right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very similar sort of uh a character of an of a completely abusive man, a guy who's just completely lost in alcoholism and darkness. Um so yeah, it was it was as tough as as watching that. But we like so the dad because mm. like because obviously you know I'm I, I'm writing this stuff mm. this stuff unconsciously not mm. realizing this is coming from me. Yeah. So the thing with the dad, like my dad, he's a, he was a, he's dead now. He's a great guy. He was, mm. and I loved him, and I'm sure he loved me. Mm. But what unfortunately. When you do treat someone like that, you don't realise what effect you're having yeah. on the child. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I think I've I've been guilty of it. I've yeah. been guilty, but it passed on a narrative that was probably passed on to him. So I've been guilty where, and it's only till recently, it's like, no, John, you, you can't talk to your kids like that. Yeah. You're scorning them. Yeah. You know, and you might do something stupid or something that's important to them. Yeah. It might be important to you, but they're only little small people. It's important to them. Yeah. You can't just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think a lot of people do it and re, don't realise they're doing it and yes. what effect it does have on the children later yeah. in life. Yeah, oh no, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, 
it, well, they become they, largely they become my clients after after a couple <laughs> of years. Um, so keep doing it, parents. Um, no, it's a. Uh, Undoing that is tough because you are so sensitive as a child. So when you see that uh, being played out, like you said, it's a pattern that repeats. It effectively just becomes intergenerational trauma then, doesn't it? It's just mm. handed down and handed down. Um, thankfully, this generation seems more conscientious than any other generation yeah. you can point to in recent history. I think a lot of cycles are going to be broken around now. Yeah. I think a lot of people are more aware, aren't they? And yeah. explore. I think especially with men being a bit more transparent or whatever else, they're exploring themselves more. Yes. Which is um, not the easiest thing to do in a sort of a predominantly white working class area where you value toughness and stoicism. It's quite hard around here getting men to open up. You're more familiar with that though because of the acting, right? I I think being I think the key is transparency and yeah. acting has helped me become transparent. Yeah. If you're transparent, you've got nothing to fear. You've got nothing to fear. You've got nothing to be in pain about. Yeah. You've got nothing to fear. Have you Have you ever been to therapy? Oh, fucking hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loads. <laughs> loads, mate. I've had yeah. fucking loads, loads. But I love that. That's, yeah, that's, I'll tell you. So when my, my mum died when I was 25, it, I'd only just opened my shop. Right. So I know I never grieved for my mum. Right. I know were, my were mum. You were you close to your mother? Well, yeah, she was my mum. Do you know what I mean? We weren't like super close or whatever. And um, well, we were, but but um, we watched the names. It's like I know I never grieved. Yeah. And I know I never the penny didn't drop for till for about thirteen years later. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'd say yeah. So I I went to therapy because I was in a lot of pain. So so it was. You were then thirty-eight, and then you realised you were you were dealing with unprocessed grief. For your That's mom. when I finally got over the grief of my mum dying. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, but everything else in between it. Yeah, I was in pain. I was distracting myself with this, distracting myself with that, being preoccupied with this. Da 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 da, da yeah. and it was all because of that. So during that time, when you're saying you're distracting yourself, you're talking like drink, drugs, party, and the whole yeah, the whole women thing, a lot, yeah, the whole and women. And drinking, just spending and just do. drinking drugs is fine, but women, John, your filthy promiscuous ways. <laughs> you come here to confess, haven't you? I have, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all come back to bite you in the ass. Say nothing, mate. Say nothing. Um, and it, uh, during that phase, was that when you was that when you got into the bodybuilding? It was around that time. Yeah. Yeah, because you know why? Because. I weren't distracting myself anymore. I'd become really focused on me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think things become a lot clearer to me and stuff like that. Yeah. I weren't distracting myself with this, da, 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 so I had to face the pain. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. I've been going, I'll go to therapy for about four years. Four years in therapy, yeah. yeah. Did it help? I think what therapy has done has given me the tools to fight the symptoms of what the real problem was. Okay. Which I don't realize, I didn't realize till lately. And it's a game changer. What do you think the real problem was? Um, Being careful, dance over the laser beams. What do you think the problem was? Okay, we're going there, are we, Richard? Let's yeah. go there, Let's lads. go there, what time are we on there? 38 minutes past. Right, okay, the problem is with me, is what I've come to realize. Mm. So I keep having relationships that fail. Right. Right. And they last for like three to five months. Yeah. And I think, why is this happening? Why can't I meet someone? Da, 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 da. Mm. But I do meet people. I meet yeah. these lovely girls mm. and I reject them. I reject the normal, nice, normal, boring girls. Right. Mm. But they're probably the healthy ones. Yeah. I'm not saying anyone else is unhealthy, but what I, I'll take responsibility for me getting into relationships that don't work and possible relationships. So, how can I how can I how can I break this down? So I had a relationship recently, this didn't work out. So I say, why hasn't it worked out? What what's the problem? What have I done wrong? Da, 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 da. Why do I keep repeating the cycle? Because what is it? I'm trying to I'm trying to word it well. I think like I think I have no self-respect in relationships sometimes. Um and I thought, well, what's 
So it's like self-esteem. Self-esteem is built up of self-respect and self-efficacy. And I so it's like, well, why why have I got low self-esteem? So I've got self-efficacy. I've got that's your belief, the ability that you can do mm. things. I've got that. Mm. So I thought it's lack of self-respect. So I start to explore why have I got lack of self-respect? Mm. Why would I allow to be allow myself to stay in a situation that I know is not good for me? Yeah. So that then took me to in a child. Yeah. So I went back to, right, okay, so da 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 And I spoke, but I, no, here's where I went to. I went to codependency. Mm. And when I looked into codependency, I was like, that. I did, I've been to therapy for years, and I, when I heard about this, I didn't want to go near it. Why? Because it fucking petrified me because I didn't want to admit it. That's the, that's the real problem though, right? There's the problem, man. Yeah. I yeah. think. Anyway, so I went to codependency. Why am I codependent? Yeah. So then I went to the inner child, healing the inner child. Mm. And I spoke to a girl called Liz Forshaw, who you should have on, by the way, because she's fucking brilliant. Liz Forshaw. She's um she's fantastic. She went Wonder- world based or no? She she's living in Puerto Rico at the moment, but oh. she's one of the most incredible human beings you'll ever meet. Uh, honestly, she's a therapist. You are. Is she a therapist? Well, she's a, she yeah she's she's qualified and everything now. Oh, okay, like, she's cool. quite thingy. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I I reached out to her on the phone because I've known her for years. Um. And I said, Liz, I, I'm going through this thing. I, I'm in a lot of pain. And uh. And I mentioned in a child, mm. and she went, John, I've always known what your problem was. Mm. Well, she, she went diagnosing me, but and I burst out crying on the phone to her. Mm. And it was like a massive release. I knew what my problem was. Right. Um, and how would you define it? How would you define the problem? You said in a child, you said it was like a lack of a lack of self-love or? I think there's a misconception when people say self-love. So when people say self-love, mm. They think it's about self-care and it's about doing it, which it is, but I think you've got to heal that child and start. I don't know whether I'm going the right way about this story, but when I've been in relationships in the past, there's been this, the best way I can describe it, and I have learned to deal with all the symptoms of this problem. Mm. So I'll meet a girl mm. and that dullness, that, um, that light that's off inside me mm. gets turned on, right? And I become unstoppable. Mm. and I feel complete. If that girl leaves, that light goes out, mm. and then I am feel deflated, I'm, I'm done. Mm. And I've always knew, I need to like that light myself. Mm. I'm just trying to weird this the best way. That was pretty good. I like that. Anyway, so then, um, where am I? I'm going back to inner child. Yeah. So I, I've got lack of self-worth. I don't think I'm worthy. I don't yeah. think I deserve to be loved. Yeah. So my love, I need to graft for my love. Yeah. I think love has got to come at a price. Yeah. And that comes from when I was a kid. Yeah. So when I was a kid, my mum was a wonderful woman and I loved her and got no doubt she loved me. And that's that. So if any of my siblings are watching it, this is my narrative. This is what I feel and believe. Mm. Like, so say, here's a thing I did last week, Richard. Well, about four weeks ago. Mm. I remember when I was a kid, I'd say to me, mum, give one pound five. And I wanted one pound five so I can go to Sayers, the bakery, mm. to get a beans and sausage pasty, a chocolate muffin and a can of tango. Mm. So I'd say, mum, give one pound five. She'd go, go away. Give one pound five. No, give one pound five. John, give one pound five. No, no, one pound five, one pound five. Oh, we are, here's your one pound five. Mm. And I get me one pound five and I go to the bakery. Mm. I was scorned for wanting something, mm-hmm. but she didn't realise she was doing it. Mm-hmm. But this has taught me as a dad as well. Do you know what I done last week? Mm. In Wales, I, I got in my car and I took the 10 year old me to the bakery, I bought him a beans and sausage pasty. Mm. I gave him a fucking chocolate muffin. I gave him a can of tango. Mm. And I went, there you go, lad. Mm. And he sat on it because he deserved it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the type of stuff I'm working on now. Yeah. So that light inside, it's the child. Mm. That child wants that validation that he never got from his mum. Yeah, yeah. And he seeks it in women, in women. He seeks it from emotionally unavailable women. It's like, I get dropped breadcrumbs a trail of breadcrumbs to hell mm. does that make sense it does yeah constantly chasing that mm. little bit of validation and whether i meet a girl and they see that mm. and they see oh god i know how we can play with him or da 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 but i yeah so are you saying am i making sense you are if you if if you work for it um you want to be in a situation where you have to win love again and again and again if the goal is agreeable, nice, kind, and loving, 
That's boring because you don't get to There's play no your game. There's no excitement in that. Yeah. That's my addiction is the dopamine when I get dropped a breadcrumb. So that it ha- so love has to start with drawn. Then you have to work. No, then no, you no. Win. Usually, usually there's a, a, a fantastic period where okay. you know. What was the analogy? I'm not. I was going to go to an analogy about a bakery, but it's like, yeah, no. But I've met this guy called uh, Lee Nairn. Mm. Uh, I opened up to John, John Charles, the artist, and like, he messed me and went, "You don't like John?" I was like, "Yeah." Anyways, you don't need a chat, you know. And I was like, because it was, you know, I, I broke broke up with someone recently, mm. and then. Um, I thought, yeah, I like John. And then I phoned him. I phoned John Charles. Mm. He's another interesting fellow you should have. And um, he said, my mate deals with stuff like this, John, and blah, blah, blah. And Lee, he used to be addicted to this same thing because it is an addiction. Yeah. Uh, Would you agree? Absolutely, yeah. And they call it love addiction, but apparently that's not what it means. You're addicted to this validation from from certain people, aren't you? Yeah, I've I've definitely seen people talk about it online as love addiction. I mean, yeah, I know what they mean. And, um, but Lee's went through that. Mm. Uh, He's he's been like a guardian angel to me lately. He's Mm. really, he's really helped me like, but I'm so grateful because when I lost weight, when I done that bodybuilding show, I was only- How old were you then? I was 38. Right. I'm 41 this year. Mm. I I was only doing that to attract a woman. A woman or various women? Well, no, various women, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I mate, you yeah, know. Sorry, I, I wasn't sure whether you're like, I had the woman in mind and I knew. Oh, up to the age of now, mm. my whole drive in life has been for this addiction. And that's to to seek a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, that kid yeah. wants that. He wants that validation. So you did the bodybuilding thing to get. Oh, unconsciously, yeah. Unconsciously. Semi-conscious. You must have had some clue. Yeah, it was, I knew it was there, really. Yeah. <laughs> Am I talking shit? No. This makes okay. sense. It makes okay. sense. Yeah, no. From a, from a codependency point of view and like uh, CPTSD, you know, about that childhood stuff, which affects your yeah, yeah. attachment styles and all that. <laughs> um, no, it totally makes sense. The- so I'm anxious, preoccupied. So when I get in these relationships, everything else doesn't matter. It's just the breadcrumbs. And do you then become paranoid and possessive in relationships or? If someone looks at my heroin, yeah. that's my heroin. Yeah. And if my heroin looks at someone else, yeah. why are you looking at someone else? Yeah, that's yeah. my heroin. Yeah. That's my addiction. And you're becoming a trauma bond or you're becoming a, you're becoming nah, uh, it's just, just toxic and unhealthy and I, I'm never going to do it again. Um, you, you, told me that you'd actually been watching my stuff for a few years. And when people tell me that, I'm always like, oh, that's great. You know, people come up to this, like, oh, I've been watching your stuff for years. And if I have, like, sometimes I'll joke and I'll be like, there must be a sad story behind that because <laughs> nobody's watching my stuff because it's, they're of having course. a great time in life. No, but it, they put it into Google, like, why is my boyfriend horrible or why is my girlfriend ignoring me? And then they end up coming to me. Mate, I'm, I'm in a cycle all the time and I'm a, I know I'm a good guy mm. um, and I deserve to be happy. So unless I break it down and explore it and see mm. why is this happening? Why? You know what I mean? I can never truly be happy. Do you ever wonder, I'm, I'm really, that's not a leading question, purely a philosophical question, if if you're inducing that, that behaviour in your partners? I've, I've, th- I've thought about that. Do yeah. I allow it? We must be allowing it. Well, that's, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, the permission must be there because if it, oh, if course, it, if yeah. it wasn't there, because I do the same thing. My cycles are not uh, longer than three months. They're usually like a year. But it's the, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And uh, Do you still repeat the cycle with all the knowledge that you have? Yes. Do you? doesn't help. See, you know, I know, I, I, I'm aware now that of certain things, there's certain triggers now, I'll go, no. Right. And I'll pull away. I, and I honestly, honestly believe I will never get into one of these toxic relationships ever again. I really believe that. I think... I think over time there's been more of an upward spiral where there, it's less and less likely <coughs> to happen. Um, for me personally, that my, my relationship was was a little bit more overtly abusive, but it, effectively it's the same thing. Trying, I have to win love from an un, from a person who can't really love me. Is it the same? It's very, very similar. Structurally, it's very, very similar. But emotionally unavailable people? Emotionally unavailable, but, but in my case also borderline personality sort of rageaholic. So I need violence as well. Usually when I start out, it's fantastic. Yeah. And then it changes. 
Well, that, I mean, I've been talking to, uh, you mentioned Sam Vaknin before we started filming. I'm talking to him a lot about this and trying to really figure it out. That, that the initial stage you probably know is a kind of narcissistic elation. Yeah, that you let's both not go, go there. Into. <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. Let's not go into narcissism. <laughs> But that, that's 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 what and that's what you try and win back afterwards. You try of course, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it all. Constantly trying to win that back. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, I'm not allowed to do a smear campaign. I know it all, Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your bodybuilding. Yeah, so I started. Yeah, <laughs> um, I really exposed myself there, didn't I? Well, the thing is, I mean, in my head, it was a lot. I had it all. I had it all ready to go, and I just fucking went to pot. I went round the houses explaining that. Well, I think. I mean, I so mean, it is. I've had childhood trauma because I felt I weren't loved, or I wasn't made to feel important. That's created a codependency, and what happened from that? I have formed a um, anxious, preoccupied attachment style, which I switched from. Because yeah. I then go to the avoidant then right after one of them, and with that, it caused me a lot of pain, and I've had to realise. Hang about, John. I need to fucking sort that out. And so, that's where I'm at. So there's a certain point in the relationship where you become avoidant or counter-dependent? No, the next relationship, I'm always avoidant. Ah, so you go... I switch between because I'm so scared. So you cycle. Yeah. You'll be uh, anxious, preoccupied, avoidant. Anxious, preoccupied, avoidant. So there's four types, isn't there? And only one of them is really healthy. Is there? Is that right? I, I, attachment styles is not my bag. I mean, okay, I well, there's four types and one of them is healthy and yeah. that's the one I'm aiming to be. Yeah. But you can't teach yourself anything. Right. I didn't choose to be like this, do you know what I mean? No, obviously obviously not. I mean, but you mu I, I'm presuming obviously it's not a smear campaign, but I presume you've also told the person that you're involved with like you've explained this to them as well. To a degree. No. Why not? Because we haven't spoken. Uh, okay. So, because my my sort of uh, still still man in my own position with this, with any ex girlfriends watching it, I can always be like, well, I, I did tell you, like I told, even when it was going on and it was it was becoming destructive, I told you what my part in it was, and I told you where you were going wrong. Do you know what I mean? In all these relationships, I've always tried my best. I think um, I've always give 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 give, and that's the problem. You give too much. Oh, massively, yeah. This is this is not from cocaine. I box occasionally, and it makes my nose. Weird. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> that Peruvian freak is bossed, oh lad. Um, no, I think I, I think well, you're doing people a favor as well. I mean, I know there can be there can be blowback for you, there can be blowback for me, but there are men out there who are in this position and they think they can't talk about it. They think it's just totally fucking taboo to even say I'm in pain and I'm trapped here. Yeah, well, that's and he can't suffer with the pain anymore, and that's why a lot of men. And that's why it's so important to be transparent. Yeah. But be careful who you speak to as well, because a lot of people do, a lot of people don't want to hear it, and a lot of people are happy that you're there. Yeah. Sorry, but it's true. Yeah. So be careful who you speak to. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, there's no... Uh, so you're not a fan of the cult of vulnerability, then you don't think just be vulnerable with anybody and be transparent with anybody. You, you do it in a boundary way. You're selective. I, I didn't. Well, I am now, yeah. but I didn't. So you told I, everyone before. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I wear a big sad sack or not like that, but if the woman in Sainsbury said, how are you, you're all right? I'd say, unless you really want to know how I am, don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, and I'm like, because I'll tell you. So I was like that. <laughs> right. Anyone who'd listen, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more, yeah. Just final thing on the overgiving thing. Do you think that is solely an individual problem or do you think that's a bit of a cultural problem? Um, I know for me it was chasing breadcrumbs of love. Yeah. Breadcrumbs of what happened when we first met. Right. The Always wanted the girl to mess up. Yeah. Mm. But you found that you weren't, that girl had sort of disappeared after a period of time. Yeah. That's what happens all the time. Yeah. Um, and largely, you think that's your problem? No, no, no. Okay. I, no, but we can, you know, I will take responsibility for yeah, my, yeah. my my part in these situations. Yeah. Which is and good. that's that's codependency and my yeah. attachment style. Yeah. And I can if, you know, I can either get into relationships and then blame, blame, blame. It's not gonna yeah. get me anywhere, is it? No. I'd rather worry about me, get myself healthy and then move on. There's not many men who admit what I'm admitting right now. No, there isn't. No. But it's important to do that. It's important for them to know that like, you know, I'm not 
I'm not on the top of some mountain going, oh yeah, no, like I'm not I've gonna I'm not gonna sit around and blame people because in these relationships it's my choice to stay. You're right. And that's that. So then from that we can deduce that there were things that occurred and there were things that said when you look that were said when you look back, you think, Yeah, I would have been justified leaving at that point. I would have ju- been justified in saying that's enough at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But you never did. No, 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 no. Fucking hell, I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. No, I've done the same thing. It I've wasn't done. just the last one, you know, it was all of them. Just saying. <laughs> it's about no one specific. It just. It's but yeah, pattern. but I'm grateful for the last one yeah. because it, it it was like, it took me back to being a child right. because I did feel like that John. I yes. did feel like little John. And it was like there was an earthquake and yeah. it brought it all to the surface and it revealed yeah. it to me and I took it and I'm dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's... um. It's it's very difficult. I, the the question about the cultural issues was a leading question because I obviously I'm into psychology, which focuses on the individual and focuses on the new past. But I also wonder how much of this is like cultural expectation. Are you allowed to ask for what you want in a relationship? And I'm not sure. No, not what you're saying. It's yeah. everywhere. It's in songs. Yeah. Like you'll have songs where, like going back to self-loving in a child and stuff, you've got songs where, the, where a man's singing, I need you. And the woman's saying, all I need is you. And, da, da, da. and it's like, no, you don't. Yeah. Just, you don't need them. Yeah. You've got to love you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't understand it until you've been to hell. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do I do think with, with that, uh, culture, the sort of, they call it romance, um, the films, the books and the songs like that. It's like an entrained codependency, isn't it? Yeah. And to me, it feels like you're almost taking one tiny part of what a relationship is and then trying to pretend that's the whole relationship. And that's the fairy tale I want to live. Just want to eat the icing off the cake. And you can't, like, there's not, there's so much more to it than, but those, that that's, that's the most consumable side of it. It feels really, really good. It's like taking a drug. You can make yourself feel good by just focusing on the fusing and merging with another person and and love for its own sake. But I, I don't know. I, I have a mainly female audience and I'm constantly trying to push them away from that. And I think they just think I'm being um, mean-spirited or something. I'm like, no, it's actually corrosive. It's going to hurt you if you keep trying to live your life like that. To have a fairy tale. I think so, yeah. I don't because it's a fairy tale. It is, yeah. It's not real. It's no, no. Not real. So there's gonna be disappointed, aren't they? Yeah, huge amounts of disappointment. Oh mate, you know what? It's like in relationships, I've been preoccupied with this person, the or these people. Yeah. And it's took away from me. Yes. And I've built me house on a sandy land every time. Yeah. And the sea comes along and wipes it all away. Yeah. But I build something great. <sighs> build something great. <sighs> this self-love, this healing me in a child, that mm. is building my life on a solid foundation. So what I'll do then is keep going. Yes. I'm not going to come along and fucking swipe it away. Yeah. So that's why I'm doing this work on myself now. But if someone comes along, yeah, sound, yeah. but fit, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be my number one. So there's that, that urge to merge. And I think similarly for me now, uh, same as you, I, I haven't said, oh, this will never happen again, but I've said, I'm definitely not fusing with somebody. If you're in my life, then you're a person, I'm a person. We're two separate people where there's no fusing, there's no merging, and any invitation. So is that non attachment? Uh, I'd not thought of that, but it, yeah, maybe. Is non attachment healthy though, Richard? That's all they're fucking getting, John. <laughs> why don't you just let them, why, so like, let them grow? Like, uh, you know, like you, you know, ivy in a house, just let it grow over time. Like that. And just just merge, over time. Over time, just merge into each other, yeah. Over time is... Rather than after six weeks, meet on Tinder. That's it. You're moving in. Yeah. He's your new dad. <laughs> That's it. We're getting engaged. Better engaged. Better what's be engaged, what's this one called? Uh, it doesn't matter. He'll be gone in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah. It's like an agreement. Time is important. Overtime is important. We rush too much. And I think like if, if people, everybody needs to slow the fuck down a little bit and stop trying to make a fancy <coughs> a reality. Mate, it's in, I've been so fucking productive lately because yeah. I've been preoccupied with myself. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yes. no, no one's getting me for a while. Mate. Well, one, one of the things uh, that, that one of the first counsellors I saw back in 2010, she was a foreshore. She's not Liz, Nicola foreshore from, uh, from the Wirral. Do you want an ice cream? <laughs> That's what she said to me. Lad, 
lads, do you want a flake? I oh, said, Nicky, I fucking love a flake. Um, Solero. <laughs> Solero. Tomorrow. The ice cream van's on the road. Um, she said to me, like, being preoccupied with these with these relationships and all this, it's uh, it's just, I, I think she's actually wrong in what she said, but she said it's just about you avoiding your own life and your own shit. But there's truth to that. If you're preoccupied with somebody else and the drama of the relationship, you don't have to look at you, D. Maybe so. Something like that, yeah. yeah. That that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, tell me about the bodybuilding. Okay. I'm fascinated by people who put themselves through what you have put I'm yourself through. I'm doing it through. now. You're doing it again? Mm. I'm not doing a show, but I'm doing a prep now, yeah. It's okay. great though, isn't it? Routine. It's good. It is good. It's good to have a discipline. Uh, tell me about the first time that you that you did it. Okay, well... How did you get into it? <laughs> well, I used to be a marathon runner. I used to run like 50 miles a week. Yeah. But I was a fat marathon runner. And for some reason, I thought running... Yeah, I'll just run. I thought running will get me in boss shape. It yeah. just never. <laughs> um, but I've done well in the marathons. I've done all right. I, um, then I got opened my barbers and then I got fat. Right. Because I was just preoccupied with work yeah. um, and as he passed it behind the counter I'd go to the shop and get like a line bar and a fucking da -da 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 -da, pile of weights on and I was in a relationship even though it was a healthy relationship yeah. I see that now it was the healthiest relationship I've ever been in right. but um, I, I made myself miserable because I wanted the excitement of being with someone who didn't validate me yeah. and then um, so I was in this miserable relationship da -da 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 -da, had a pile of weights on yeah. and I was in a Beth Fred commercial and um, my wife was about 50 and I was about 32. And I remember, I remember the casting director saying, don't they make a great couple? Yeah. And I was like, nah, hate me that. Yeah. And then I went on Johnny Advert and I'm dancing and I got the job because I was a big fat man. Lad. I know. I know. Whoa. What, what, uh, what weight did you get up to there? I was about 17 stone. And how old were you? 32. But anyway, I seen the advert and I was just like, I need to do something about this. Yeah. So we started, I seen this lad, Jay, um, Jay Pato, and I've known him for years and dad, he was just a kid who used to come in the shop, a naughty yeah. little ADHD kid. Yeah. And um, one day I saw him on Facebook. I was like, he, what? He'd done a fucking bodybuilding show. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. But I thought, if Jay can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So I sort of contacted Jay. I was like, Jay, how'd you do that, lad? So he started training me then. But yeah. we went to a gym called Tier Pro in Crosby. And it's run by Carl Tierney. And um, he was like Mr. Fucking Super Bodybuilder. Mm. I don't know what he won, but he won something amazing. He was at the top of his game. Yeah. Um, and Jay went to another gym. He went to Total Fitness. But I wanted to stay in Tier Pro. And I didn't really like Total Fitness because it was a little, it's a little community anyway. I thought, and there was another lad, Brad. And Brad's done a, done a show. Um, and he won and it was Brad who, who inspired me I thought Brad can do it I can do it mm. so I approached Carl and went Carl you, I was pretty overweight at the time probably about 16 stone mm. and I said Carl can I do a show and he looked me up and down and went it's going to be hard work you know <laughs> and I was like <laughs> I'm committed to do it Yeah. so I actually moved to Frodium so I had no distractions da -da 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 -da. Um, and then I started so I started in a January in a January and the show was in August. And well, I'd lost five stone by I'd say the July. And yeah. then I had to eat food to keep the weight on me because yeah, yeah. otherwise I would have went too lean or I would have had too much excess skin. I only had a little bit of excess skin. Yeah. Anyway, I got on stage and I'd done it. And um it was amazing. Could you could you pull up the picture of John looking all ripped? There's, there was pictures there, but I wasn't I wasn't that lean. Do you know? Do you know um, what your body fat got down to? Did anybody estimate it? I don't know. Um, but it was yeah. around 10% or something, but I got leaner than that. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I've got pictures, really sick pictures. I'll send you them. That's, See, that, that was yeah, a while off the show anyway. Well, you're in amazing shape there, and you did that in what, six six months? That was probably about five months. Five months? Mm -hmm. So you went from 17 stone to that in five months? Mm, about 16 stone to that. Yeah, yeah. Fucking but I was hell. I was super committed. Like there was no there was what no, one cheap meal. Well, I had one cheap meal. I went on a date and he said, have a, have a three course meal. I was like, no. 
It was like having three quarters. I was, like, I was petrified too because I was so in the fucking zone in the and flow. How many calories a day were you? Were you <laughs> well, how it works. Um, I was at it's macronutrients, so I had yeah. started off with like 250 grams of carbs, 250 mm. grams of protein, and 50 grams of fats. Mm. And then, so I, we set that as like the baseline, and then we would start to take away carbs. Yeah. So you'd always need something to take away. Yeah. So anyone, you know, and like I'd start off on a 20 minute walk originally, I'd do yeah. one 20 minute walk a day, yeah. and we hide it to 45 minutes. Yes. So we need to either add something or take it away when you're at your plateaus. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's about we're just taking the carbs away over time. Yeah. And every yeah, it just it just kept coming off, coming off, coming off. And uh, were you training twice a day or were you? No, no, I was training three to four times a week for lifting weights for for the actual four times a week for 45 yeah. minutes, but I walked every day. You walked every day. Yeah, and I had one uh, mill of testosterone as well. Every, you know, in case everyone says, oh, he's just the juice. It's not, you know. One, it's just just it, one mill of testosterone it, a week. That's what I was having, yeah. Which that's is all. fuck all, really. No, not really, I know. But that was that's only the, to sustain uh, me muscle. I mean, I'm on that now. Is uh, They call it TRT, mm. which is what middle-aged men do when they take roids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on roids. It's, it's just, TRT. Just, it's just replacements. Yeah, yeah. yeah you like, so is it, is it a different substance to roids? No, it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I was in the lip, like, over the transformation, I got absolutely fucking destroyed. Does Everyone it? was like, oh, steroids, that's that. I've been training for 20 years, never got a nick like that. Yeah, well, same properly then. That, that, that is a serious... And officially... In, in, in such a short period of time, that is a very impressive achievement. Well, I've done a show in Leeds and... Um, Oh, Richard, when I got off stage, I walked in the back and I fucking burst out crying. Yeah. I was like, why have I burst out crying? It wasn't because it was a, it was a release. Yeah. I'd done it. Yeah. Because yeah. that was a, my low self-esteem. A lot of it come from the way I looked. Yeah. And I'd conquered it, man. And yeah. to have stuck at it for so long, I was yeah. so proud of myself. I fucking um, burst out crying. And there's the guy, I was in the back and they were all going, jogged. There's a big field. Come here. I was like, what? I just give him fucking come here. And then he took me on stage and he, um, there was a cardboard cutout of me. What we done. I didn't place, I yeah. placed about five out of nine, which is done all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to place. I just wanted to be worthy to stand yeah, up there. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, they got me back on stage and uh, all the people had traveled up from the gym and they all got on stage and he had a cardboard cutout and the UK BFF. And the Tier Pro GM, they give me like a special award. Wow. They said, no, we've never, ever given anyone this award before. Yeah. He said, what you've done is just fucking outrageous. Like, Yeah, it is. It's, it's an incredible transformation. Yeah. How, how long were you then sort of on this uh, uh, phase of like eating in a, in a really... Well, I carried... I, I was doing all right. And then da, 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 da. And then I got with a narcissist. And then I've just come tumbling down. <laughs> yeah. I got idealized, devalued. So, so you were, you were sort of, you, you got on that diet for like a year, two years, something like that. Um, I, I stayed on it till I stayed on it. Yeah. And then <laughs> I should have said that bit, but it, <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. No, but it did. No. I did. Yeah. I, I got with, I got with a girl and, um, it all just come crumbling fucking down again. Well, I, I, I've been saying for, for years, I, I need to formulate it properly. I'm convinced there's a relationship between codependency, uh, and drug use, alcohol use, and, and overeating. There's that. There's there's something to that, and I think it's about uh, safety and emotional regulation. So if you're getting really, it's emotional regulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got to be right. It's the pain. You have got that core pain, which is yeah. the addiction to. Yeah. That you, the, that yeah. validation, which is codependency, yeah. yeah. and you use all these other stuff yeah, to yeah. just. And food's a tough one. I I, I kicked uh, I, I kicked a proper cocaine addiction when I was about twenty eight. Right before I met Lawrence, actually Lawrence Kenwright. Uh that's why I met him in uh, over in Tenerife. And um people were like, Wow, how did you do that? And I was like, I stopped taking beef. <laughs> that was how I did it. And all the names on my phone that would have asked me to snort with them or sell them. So I just went, click, you're all gone. Done. Food though. Food's hard. You gotta eat every day. <laughs> and it's it's so easy to it's eat. It's self harm. It is like, I think I think well, I know we have a belief of who we are and where we belong or what we're told we are. Mm. So I was always going to put that weight back on. I was always going to put that weight back on because that's not me. Because right. I don't allow myself to be him. Do you know what I mean? I'm meant to be overweight. I'm meant to be not good enough because that's my core belief of myself. That's like um, there was a guy in the 40s, he was a plastic surgeon, American, Ma Maxwell Maltz. He wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics. 
And and he wrote it, he came up with this whole theory because he'd give women plastic surgery to make themselves feel beautiful and 99% of them still felt ugly. The nose is smaller, the eyes are smaller. And he was like, you have a version of yourself in your head. Yeah. And if you're not matched to that, you'll just keep going back to it. You have to change that internalised version that you've got of yourself. That's exactly it. Richard, I had, I had a lot of money in the bank, more money than I've ever had in my life. From the from the shop, doing well? No, just I just I come into it with the show. I had, I had quite a few bob. Yeah. Spent it all. Because you weren't, you didn't feel you deserved it. I didn't it. deserve to have that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And that's it. Yeah. And with, you know, recently I've just learned so much about myself and I understand why. Because mm. I, I really, really believe I'll never get into a toxic relationship again. Mm. I believe once I do this transformation, I'll never have to do it again. And my money in the bank is just going to go up. I have absolutely, and I'm working on changing on my belief of myself. Yeah. And it's my low self-esteem and my lack of self-worth that's what's that's what has really sailed my ship in fantastic situations but also shit ones i've had some massive highs do you know what i mean yeah would you so right now uh you're you've begun the process of of the transformation again you're back in training yeah. and you're back dieting again but when i when i was in great shape i was fucking i was miserable i oh, was yeah. depressed were you really? After the show, well, yeah, after the show, I was depressed because I'd, I'd split up with a girl. I'd met a girl. Oh. I, I, which was, I thought was pretty healthy, but I went to Bali to celebrate my show. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. And then she fucked me off after four days. I flew home from Bali to fix it. No, so, she, you went to Bali without her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I was and, going anyway, but I felt yeah. quite safe and secure. Yeah. yeah. And then she, she ended it for some reason. Yeah. And then she come back, I come back. I flew back after three days, four days. She picked me up from the airport, took her to hers. Yeah. Give her a present. She went, I'm going to the Aldi now, so you best go. And that was it. I flew home from Bali to see you, but that was fucking stupid, am I? Do you know what I mean? But that was me, my codependency. It was my biggest fear. I had loads of money in the bank, great body, but I didn't want to lose that girl because that light inside yeah. needed to be lit. Well, I, I, it's not a therapy session, but if it was, John, I would, yes. I would challenge you there. I would say it's not stupid. I think what you did was good. It was loyal. It was what people do when they're presumably you told each other you loved each other yeah presumably you had plans to be together I, well yeah I, yeah so you're not a knobhead for like there's a real investment there you're not in you're not i don't think it's in hindsight i could sit here and go lads you don't do that no with i the birds. you gotta fuck them off and but it, was it stupid i think it was yeah at the end of the day i'm in bali Thousands and thousands of miles away. It's and this hard girl, to get to Bali as well. It is it? pretty you've hard, got to yeah. Drive, you've got to go to Singapore and then down. You can't go direct, can you? No, you go. To, I think you go to Bangkok. somewhere in the Middle East. Or yeah. Then oh, yeah, there. Dubai and down you can do. But it's this girl said, anyway. um, she told me the day before how much she was fucking in love with me. And then she just discards me like that. And I flew home. And I shouldn't have. Because what, was she worth me flying home for? Because if someone really loved me, they wouldn't have told me while I'm on the other side of the world. How, how old were you when this happened? 38. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. you. Know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. But I wouldn't you. do it. I wouldn't do that. So after this transformation. We'll see what they say in the comments about that. Yeah, I think, see what I they think, say. I think, I think a, lot, a lot of people. I know it's dead romantic, but it's the fairy tale, innit? It doesn't exist. <laughs> You sound more bitter than me. He's the first man I spoke to who's more bitter than me. Makes me feel good. Um, yeah, no, kill your dreams. But here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. So I'm doing this transformation now. Yeah. And in October, I'm going to Bali. And I am going to And it, He doesn't that. give a fuck who rings him. Yeah. He's fucking staying. Because no one will have me. <laughs> am I bursting your mic there? I'm going to Bali and I, I am going to do that. What I, I'm going to fulfill that. Fucking <laughs> 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 because <laughs> no one will have me love it um so, so okay the, the where i was going to get back to was i was going to try and soft sell people following you on social media and it went mad how, soft sell. how can how can they follow you on instagram doing your transformation because people, <sighs> people love that are you going to show them on the on the instagram like the, the workouts you're doing and all that um how old am the first i time how, about to... how old am i calling it the instagram by the, the way? instagram <laughs> 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 on Instagram. Um, I'm not going to what? you fucking hell, mate. No, I, no, I'm not. I'm not. Why I'm, not? I, I, I've, done, I've done a video, Richard, right? Yeah. Like, about three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, 
I haven't lost any weight, but I'm, I'm my belly's gone down, but my weight's the fucking same. So what's going on there? But um, it's the traps, lad. That's what it is, lad. <laughs> but I, uh, I don't know. This is all I'm gonna do. Honest, I'm not because last time I done loads of pictures all the yeah. time. I must have done people's heads in. Yeah. I done one video where I'm looking in the mirror and I'm holding my belly and stuff like yeah. that. And I go up to the mirror and I click my fingers like that. Yeah. And I'm going to replace it with it with a, when I'm in shape. That's all yeah. I'm going to do. That's it. That's it. Yeah. There's no, there's so, okay. I'm so. not going to do a big, I used to do blogs and, well, vlogs. I used to do like yeah. a big talks on, you might have seen them on my YouTube. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to do that now. No. You're just no. going to get on with it and do it. It's about me. It's the first time I've voiced it. First time I've told anyone, really. Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 Um, so as, pe as people see you just doing other social media posts, they'll see your face. Yeah. yeah, I might have to get a bit of filler because I got a bit of a saggy face. That's all right, lad. It's a fucking, do you know what I mean? It's 2027. Right on uh, Bold Street, he'll show you know, you know, it right. sounds. <laughs> Frowned out, <African. laughs> uh, Did you phone him, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it's been about half an hour and he's still not here. <laughs> phone him again, lad. <laughs> phone him again. Fucking hell, lad. Just bank transfer me the money. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if people want to, uh, am I am I plugging myself here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if people want to follow me, it's uh, that John May on Instagram. I don't even know what I'm called on TikTok, and I'm on YouTube called um, the John Mayway. The John Mayway, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's where I've known you from. Yeah, from that. Yeah. How are you finding? Uh, so you said uh, YouTube wasn't doing amazingly well, but Instagram is is the one for you, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't told you about my characters, have I? Um, tell me now. I'll tell you now. So, okay, so as an actor, I tell a story on every podcast. But as an actor, I, uh, I've i been to loads, I've done loads of auditions, da 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 da. Yeah. And um, I just, I just, when lockdown came, I just started doing fucking characters and it just took off. Were these, <laughs> t tell me the truth, were these characters you were doing on your own <clears throat> while you were doing the cooking or brushing your teeth anyway? Were you doing like Craig impressions while you're driving and. Do they come to you like that? No, I think I've always had these little... I've still got a few in the bank in my head. I've just yeah. like... I've always done these characters that I knew get a response, like with the O's, because I knew yeah. people mightn't have been aware of that, so that would make them realise that yeah, was yeah. funny. And then yeah, yeah. I had a Dachach talk like this, like I was speaking in the yeah. and I've got like turkey teeth. Well, I had to create turkey teeth. But I had that, these... That you knew... So turkey teeth wasn't a spontaneous one. That was like, I want to talk about... Like I had to create him. Okay. But I'd say Kenny, Karen, Craig, they're all a part of me. Okay. Yeah. And what, what, why did you, when you say you had to create him, that was because you specifically wanted to talk about that issue? I knew these people. Yeah. I knew them. You but can't escape them in Liverpool. No, <laughs> but I'm, he's not a part of me. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I've you've had just, to. You, that's something you've observed external to yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where the others are part of me. So for people who've not, who've not seen, that character, can you explain him a little bit so people people know what they're looking at when when they look him up? Do you know much about Turkey Teeth? Have you watched them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so Turkey Teeth, like he just he's just very superficial, isn't he? Yeah. He just um, he's just a dickhead. He's just he, you describe him, Richard. Well, there's a trend. You're more articulate than me. There's a trend. Well, I, I, years ago, and I do mean like fifteen or twenty years ago, we were, uh, I don't know, we were in a conversation about Liverpool and vanity. And there's like the tendency towards vanity here. And it was listed in the UK as having the most sunbeds per square mile really? in the whole of the UK. So there is like a flashy culture here, isn't there? And then when you could get your teeth done, every fucker wanted to get their teeth done. And yeah. the cheapest place to do it was Turkey. And then you've got this whole, there was this whole wave of people going off to Turkey, getting all their teeth knocked out or whatever they do. They yeah. file them down, don't yeah. they? And they stick the veneers in. And then they come back. Well, that's just one of the, that's just, Part of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Part, lads is getting it. He probably he's probably had an air transplant turkey. Turkey would have had an air yeah, transplant. Yeah, definitely. Well. Even if he didn't need one, he probably would have got one. He would have got one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also am I am I wrong with this? Like obviously we're we're closer in age. That's you taking the piss out of a younger generation as well, somewhat as well, isn't it? I'd say like the four or five people who are based them on are probably probably all forty. Maybe. Are they? Yeah, yeah they're more yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um but it's that, yeah, the totally pointless just showing off for no need whatsoever type of thing, yeah, superficiality. It's, yeah, it's just trying to impress the birds and trying to be one of the lads, isn't he? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. But I, just, I want to humanise him one day. I think I've done, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that yet. Like I've done it with Craig. I've showed the, 
I've showed Craig, who Craig really is, you know what yeah. I mean? I've really showed you, because in Kenny's Christmas Carol, like he, Kenny's, I'd say Kenny's a bit of a narcissist, I'd say. Yes. He's just, he's just in for himself. He's just, he's horrible to card and he just gaslights it. He just does this, he just does that. But then delving into, as you can sort of see why he's the way he is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, that, that was what I saw with the uh, Kenny uh, Christmas Carol 2 was an exploration of the character and his background. And yeah, like, yeah. He is a bit of a knob, <laughs> but here's why. Yeah. Like, this is what he's been through. And then you'd have to be pretty hard hearted, even if to not feel some degree of empathy for somebody who'd mm. gone through that. I even, uh, when I when I was watching it, and there's this, there's a, it's not a very long, it's maybe about three seconds, as one of the characters sort of does this. After, right after the scene of the, of the dad abusing the kid and it looks like somebody going through a PTSD flashback. He's waking up from the vision, but it, it's psychology. I'm like, oh yeah, but that's also the dissociation of a PTSD flashback. Really? That's what I thought. This is an, an interpretation of art because that's, it, it wasn't actually part of the story. And it made me think of the times, because I did security work in the pool for years, where lads would out of the blue attack me as though they were attacking somebody else. And I was like, that's where it is. They think they're hitting their dad or they're getting back or somebody's bullied them as a kid. And now I'm, because I'm, wear, I'm wearing a, I'm in a uniform, I'm a doorman. And so I'm just a, an NPC to them. I'm yeah, nobody. yeah, yeah. They're like you're bullying me the way. And then they go through this flashback and then there's sudden violence like wow. from nowhere. That was my association to your, I mean, it's just, that's art, isn't it? When you do something, you don't know what people project. I just didn't realise how good I was as an actor. <laughs> It's good, man. It's good. I mean, yeah. the comparison to Ray Winstone and Nil by a Mouse, that's, that's pretty good. Really? Heavy. Yeah, I must watch that. Obviously, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, don't you don't, need to, you don't need to go through the whole thing, but like 15, 20 minutes of it, and you'll see what he's doing. He, do you rate him, Ray Winstone? Yeah, he's, he's a legend, isn't he? I mean, he's not yeah. my favourite, but... He's, he's really good in that, Re and he's believable. Gary like, Oldman in that? Am I right by saying that? It could be, yeah. could be. Um, but it's 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 dark. I mean, yeah, the, to to convey that level of darkness, I think is difficult. Um, so the the uh, yeah the other characters you said they're they're more like spontaneously part of you. Definitely, yeah. Like yeah. Craig, like Craig plays Pokemon Go. He's he's very um, he's he's got an avoidment. He's got a, um avoidance. Uh, <laughs> Avoidance uh, attachment style. Yeah. I done a whole episode it's called uh, First Dateables. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you watched that one, but yes, he, he goes yeah. on a date. Yeah, but that's what I saw to done with him. He like he met a girl, but he 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 had to re as much as she was lovely as he really liked her, he had to reject her in the end. Yeah, because he just didn't want to get hurt again. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that was that's my that's when I'm avoidant. That's that's the that's that part of you. Yeah, yeah. But Craig is yeah. There's there's just so much depth to these characters now, yeah. and people have fell in love with them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's cool. So this is, this is uh, and these are the characters you're pitching in your show yeah. uh, for a potential pilot. Yeah. Well, I've done a live, don't know if you know, I've done a live show um, just over the road, actually, in Hangar. Yeah. I um, I started these characters during lockdown, and I just, it was just little sketches at first, and they were funny, but then I started to add a little bit of story to it and a bit of depth. Yeah. And then I finished it off with Kenny Corona got kidnapped and, but I play all these people, by the way. Um, I think about, there's about seven or eight of them now. So I, I've done this drama, this comedy where I play everyone. Yeah. And um, we, I finished that series. I thought, you know, finish on a high, because it'll get boring. Mm. And then people wanted more. Mm. But my Instagram went mad. It's like, I only have 4,000 followers. Yeah. And then I got about 70,000 now. It's just over a year, it's just went mad. Over the last 12 months, is Well, it? a little bit more now. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I've done another series who's Derek. And where Derek and Craig went on little adventures and then I done Kenny's Christmas Carol. But then this guy got in touch with me and said, would you do a live, would you do stand up? Yeah. And I haven't really done live performances and stuff. And um, I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, mate. Da, 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 da. Anyway, he talked me into it and um, it, it just went dead well. Did, did it go well? So you were doing these characters in a stand up format, were you? Yeah, well, we, we the first four nights, we sold four nights out in under 60 seconds. Everyone thought, I thought the, the fuck? fucking website, yeah, I know. It just went mad. For how many seats? Well, that one, it was in Hangar, it was 200. But a night, 
because it was locked down. But then we went on tour around the country. You sold 200 seats? No, 800. Fucking hell. In 60 seconds. But then I sold the Olympia out two nights in a row, which is 1,500 people a night. What the fuck? I know. It was great. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's really, really, really good. But how the fuck am I going to play all these people at once on stage? <laughs> right, right, right. She's like, shit. So I sold all these fucking tickets and I'm like... <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> We've got two months left. How quickly can you change the wigs? That's the question. Yeah. So we thought, I was just, I thought, we'll just do John May like, stand, but I'm not a stand-up comic. Yeah. I'm an actor. And um, thought, what can I do? So I come up with this idea where... John May hasn't turned up and Turkey Teeth put this night on yeah. with Neil Seas, who's another character. Yeah. And um, John May doesn't turn up and Turkey's going out of his mind because he's got all these people. But yeah. this is all on the big screen. Right. And um, they're all in the car <laughs> coming to the show. And Turkey ropes them in. He goes, look, he's going to have to go on. And they're like, we're not going on. Yeah. And uh, he makes them all, they all go on individually. Okay. So first it's Kenny Corona. It's Derek. And Derek does a TED talk on Grafton selling cocaine nice. which is great yeah and then he goes off and then all this narratives going on in the background so yeah. when the little video was on um ben filmed it actually when he um, when the Liverpool, uh, Liverpool vid- small place he's fucking everywhere <laughs> when when he uh, when the, the video was on i get changed to another character yeah and then did it did, 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 like there's like five characters it's a two hour one man show that's amazing yeah so I'm you've got you've got the video running on the screen that binds the narrative together and gives you a chance to to get changed that's yeah. amazing that's but i have really to remember good. two hours worth of dialogue and how how, how was that so yeah yeah but by the, the last show in the olympia it was fucking amazing it was, was it, a, yeah. it was it was amazing man how many how many nights did you do in the olympia we've done two nights in the olympia fucking 1500 hell. people a night we sold it out that is incredible. And, and how quickly did the Olympia sell out? Well, the first night, it pretty much sold out straight away. Yeah. That might have been like a day and a half. And then the second one, we sold the majority of that out. And then we probably had about, well, he had to put extra seats on for the last night. Fucking hell. Yeah, it was great. Should have went for the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I bought a nicer car. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I bought a car with the money. Thank you. And um, is it is it mainly Scousers going to see it or is it people from, from all over? Well, I... Uh, mine's predominantly Liverpool like yeah. I am struggling to get to these other cities yeah. um, Glasgow was hard not gonna lie yeah. <laughs> I thought Glasgow but when I went to London and done it I was I thought London was gonna be tough Yeah, I thought you know what use these shows as a warm up John but in London they were fucking in aesthetics they and how, loved it and how, what, what sort of size of rooms are you filling in London um, these are comedy clubs yeah and we, we, yeah they weren't they weren't were as um, they weren't they were sold out of Liverpool they were probably only about half full to be honest yeah but um, but they but they really enjoyed it. it London, he fucking loved it. I was dead surprised. Yeah, he wanted more. It's like it's all I've got. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Know. But it just goes to show it does work. Yeah. And I think these characters can work. Yeah, it's yeah. like you, you had Rabsi Nesbitt or you got uh, Phoenix Knight or you've got this. It, it it's all the same people. We're all the same. Yes. You know yeah. What I mean? Well, I, I had a similar conversation with Milo talking about Troy Hawk and just the uh, the the options that it gives you if you're playing a character. And where you can go to and the absurdity you can take it to. I, I, I think it's great. I think it's yeah. absolutely fantastic. I have a Metro yet. We do speak to each other, but I really need to go and see him. I think he's great. He is, he is good. Um, should get you both on a podcast once. Yeah. If, uh, possibly. So. All right, Troy. Hey. <laughs> Not a god. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John. All right. All of your stuff, mate. Yeah, I look yours as well. And that'll be that. Let's have a baby. You know what? He's deep. Let's get in a trauma bond together. Do you know he's deep <laughs> into psychology? Is he, yeah? Yeah, he studied psychology at uh, Liverpool Uni. Or, jo- okay. or was it John Moores? No, Liverpool Uni, yeah. He, really, w- yeah. he was actually on his master's for psychology. And I think he spewed it because he was in a band. What was the band he was in? can't remember. Arctic Monkeys or one of the local bands. <laughs> yeah, he ended up being in a band and then doing stand-up comedy. A really smart dude. Really, yeah. really smart guy. Um, and super literate when it comes to like CPTSD, narcissism, all that. That would be a weird fucking podcast if the three of us were just discussing that. with CPTSD. I'm not doing anything else. Let's, <laughs> you know, lads, childhood trauma, it's sound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. Sorry about this. Oh, sorry, you know sorry to John's fans. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, if... What the fuck? If, <laughs> If people want to follow you, it's uh, Instagram is is predominantly the place, right? Yeah, I'm trying to kick me TikTok off, but TikTok's hard as well. TikTok is hard. 
I think I think TikTok's one of those things you just gotta be like, right, I'm gonna spunk something out one a day every day. Yeah, I know. And and just nonstop. See, I put a video out last because I'm consciously trying to I don't wanna be one of them social media. I don't. I just would rather make a video every three months and do a good one. But when yeah. if you do good one every three months, you forgot about. Yeah, that's a pro yeah. Absolutely. So you need to be churning stuff out. Like I put a video out last night and I didn't particularly think it was that funny. Yeah. Um, but I'd, I've had to do it. And I don't know. There's a, there's a greed for content, and the YouTube certainly is. I've said this to people. Uh, the YouTube algorithm is only rewarding people who are pretty much every other day at least, and really? short, every other day at least. See, so my 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 story because I haven't posted as much. Yeah. My story views were like sixteen thousand. Yeah. Like. Like if I had a story, I'd look and it'd have sixteen thousand. Yeah, I get two to three thousand now. It's because I haven't posted as it's, much. Yeah, it's like a, it's it like just... an engine that cools down, and and YouTube really, they they're, they're animals. YouTube, they they want content and they want tons of it and they want it now. And if you won't do it, uh, you just get so. If I them. post, you know, my little vlogs that I did. If I post because with that or a do one every yeah. day, yeah, they go like him. Yes, they, they would. would. Yeah, that's they the way would. it is now. We we ran it as an experiment. I've got a, a, a lad in Russia um, who does video editing for me, Max. Hello, Max. And he was supposed to be doing videos for our, uh, Instagram. And we, we we talk via voice notes. And uh, I, I give him instructions every couple of weeks for what I'm wanting to do for the month. And he misheard an instruction. You give a guy in Russia instructions I via voice note? I give a man in instruction <laughs> Russia. He makes many good deal for me. And um, one month he misunderstood what I, what I said. I was probably in the gym with loads of music in the background. It's going to do this for me, Max. And so he started banging loads of stories on YouTube. And we shot from, I was getting 5,000 new subscribers a month. We went up to 35,000 subscribers. You were getting five a month? Yeah. Wow. Now now 35. And some of these shorts that he put by mistake six God. weeks ago are at 1.5 million You're views. You're getting 35,000 a month? Now I am. Fucking yeah. hell. Because yeah. they preferred, because you want to compete with they, TikTok? Yeah. you got to be a, you got to be a total whore. Total slat. And just and just bang but, it out, bang it out. Look, but it's us, you know, grown men talking about fucking TikTok and all that. The TikTok. No, but it's like, I didn't think years ago I'd be talking about, you know, what content can I put on my social media. Yeah. But it's, it, it's, I need to do that so I can sell shows. That's what it is. You need to do that because you need to make money. And I've got to sell courses. That's yeah. the way it, the world has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. And it's, it's some of the people I coach, they're like, they're, they're musicians or... Well, I've had this conversation with musicians multiple times the last three years and they're going, but I'm an artist. I just want to do the music. I'm like, you're an entrepreneur now. It doesn't matter. It do like, because the way that you're selling tickets, the way I sell tickets for, yeah. for lectures, they have to sell seats because they're not, the they're, they're not going to be chucked a load of money by a record label. So they have, and even if they are, the record label is still going to force them to do their own promotion, their own marketing, sell seats. It's, that's just... We all have to do it now. So because of your short, your your it's gone huge. Uh, it, yeah? YouTube is massively rewarding shorts. So yeah, if you banged out vlogs, if you did it, uh, if you did your TikTok and you did sixty seconds on TikTok, you download that, bang it straight up on YouTube. So you only record one video. Your TikTok's full, and then your YouTube is full every day. I have longer videos, so my videos are like six minutes long. Yeah, but there's loads of jokes in them. Right. So if I just done a 30 second video with one joke in, yeah. that would probably fly. Probably. Because people's attention span, we That's know this, don't is. we? That's what it is. So maybe I'll just get some of the jokes out of the six minute videos and throw them on as shorts. You can do. I mean, there's, there's people. I probably won't. There's people like, well, that. <laughs> hey, you, Ben. <laughs> you, you busy? You've got to hire someone. You've got to hire someone because you probably won't. You probably won't. No, I probably won't, no. Um, so I just give it to somebody and then put them on a monthly contract. And I'm like, please, because I can't do be you, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Guy in Russia. There's a guy in Russia. There's uh, he's still, he's he's available for for work, but there's other people. I promise people. me the work to bed now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's way way cheaper with the Russians. Lads. No, no, I'm sure I'm sure Ben's good as well. Sure he is. <laughs> well, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> You're fucking <laughs> not following him. <laughs> Supporting Russia. Sorry. <laughs> I'll be in trouble now. I'll get a phone call. Uh, did you say you're sending money to Russians at the moment? I like Benis Richard. Do you mind deleting that bit about Russia? Sorry about MA, that MA5. Uh, that's been a nightmare. He wants to be paid in crypto and all kinds. It is really? A, yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare getting money over Should there. Should have got Ben. Yeah. Come on, Ben. Um, mate, I'm really, really happy that you came in today. I'm lovely to have met you, Richard. I've known who you are for years. Yeah. 
and you keep popping up lately and your videos have helped me so nice one thank you mate thanks very much for coming in my pleasure if we can do it again would you up for doing it again Fucking right let's get Troy in Let's get Troy in, lad. Let's tear shit up. Come on. Right, Let's we'll get have in a few... our childhood trauma and pull it out. You'll have a few lines and then we'll get into <laughs> childhood trauma. Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> Is your mate here yet, Ben? Come on, call him again. Keep ringing him until you got to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and your attention. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Ta-da.